We're standing first off in front of this buggy, so I can't avoid a question about it. And really, I think it's interesting because this represents not just a concept uh, for Volkswagen, but also really a new business model. You're going to license the platform technology. Tell me how that'll work. Uh, yeah, we we are really fast in uh, getting up to volume with the MEB. Already 15 million cars booked, and you know, in this new technology, the drivetrains will be quite similar. No, it's not as today, and you just mentioned the V8 engine, V8 diesel engines. The differentiation between the drivetrains in the electric age will be much more limited. No, if you have one engine in the back, one in the front, you have a big size a chocolate bar, battery in between, uh, so two motors and then the electric converters. So it does make sense to share this technology, to make it just cheaper, more affordable, and to do better cars, to do more emotional cars. Uh, and we are now, we are really making good progress, 50 million cars already booked and we have considered and uh, I think it just makes sense to offer this platform also to third parties, have our margin there and uh, make uh, electricity really come through and, and uh, give it a breakthrough. Well, it's also a new revenue stream yeah. and you know, car makers are experimenting with a number of different ways to bring in more money. You're going to need it because you're investing 50 yes. billion euros in electrification of Volkswagen uh, automobiles. How much can you bring in with new revenue streams? Well, it's probably too early to, uh, to judge, uh, but in, and for, for the foreseeable future, really cars will be our main source of income still to come. The cars will change quite significantly, no? and there will be one or the other, uh, let's say, uh, offers in addition to the cars. Uh, through connectivity, uh, through hiring cars out, but most of it will hit our dealers, the value stream of our dealers. So our core business will remain cars, but let's say with the platform technology, we think there might be a second source of income. You have also a heck of a lot of value locked up in Volkswagen analysts have been talking about for years. In one uh, segment, you've got trucks, for example. Can we expect an IPO announcement in the next couple of days? Uh, we are working on that. The team is really preparing the company for IPOing, but you know, the final decision will be taken against the market conditions, and that's still to decide. What about the luxury vehicles? I noticed Lamborghini ownership went from Audi to Porsche. So it looks like you're setting up for something as far That's as... That's mainly internal organization where we find the most synergies and clearly the sports cars have the highest synergies with Porsche. So Porsche is really dedicating resources and steering Lamborghini uh, but also Bentley because the synergies are there. It doesn't make sense to keep it under control of Volkswagen where we have uh, uh, scarcely any synergies. So can we expect to see an IPO there in the future? I mean, a lot of people have said that's worth more than the entire company is currently valued at in the market right now. Lamborghini, you say. That, that and, Porsche. Be, that, <laughs> and Porsche. And <laughs> Porsche. Porsche, Porsche. Uh, you know, we are, we are considering our brand portfolio when it comes to, because, you know, this world is changing and we need to, uh, understand which kind of brands do we need in five, in ten years time, how do we cover the world of mobility. Uh, we have new brands to come when it comes to services. So the brand portfolio is under review, uh, but we think uh, we have a very good brand portfolio from really top level premium cars to mainstream. Uh, and just recently we launched a sub-brand in China, Jetta, for let's say giving entry into the, uh, give, opening up a new entry into the Volkswagen brand. So our brand portfolio is good, but always under, under review. Let's talk about the, the changing world that, that you bring up here. You've mentioned previously that tariffs in, worst, in a worst case scenario could cost Volkswagen 3 billion euros. What have you done to avoid that? Are you talking to the Trump administration directly? Yeah, we have been talking to the Trump administration, also to European administration uh, and to Berlin. Uh, because that's really a threat for us. It would cost us also workplaces. America is a very important market for our premium brands, for Porsche, uh, for Audi mainly. So we're trying to really avoid this uh, uh, conflict, uh, this clash. I think it's possible to avoid it. We do everything, but we have to understand that uh, between the tariff negotiations, which not only covering the automotive market, but uh, an area of, of, of field, so we only can, let's say, facilitate, contribute, uh, and show goodwill. Yeah. There are many, obviously, different tariffs, but Donald Trump seems focused on the 10% tariff that the EU levies on American cars. Would you be happy to get rid of that? 
Uh, you know, I, I don't think that we have to protect uh, our European companies with a 10 per, uh, 10 uh, import tax on American cars. I think it's just not necessary. We are competitive. Uh, so this is, uh, but you have to understand that in a, in a whole tariff scheme between uh, uh, different products and uh, this is not in our hands, but we would be totally open to that kind of discussion. Finally, there's just 24 days, I think, until the official Brexit is scheduled. Can you quantify the cost of uh, a hard Brexit to Volkswagen? Yeah. It's very hard to quantify because, you know, we, we don't know exactly what's going to happen. No, it, it might be a transition period. We would have a slam of, of sales probably in the UK. Uh, the biggest exposure we have with Bentley, we have a big plant there. Uh, Bentley is exporting about 80 uh, percent, 85 percent of its production into Europe and Asia and the Americas. So for them, this would be really a major reshuffle of their operations. So that's probably the biggest concern. And UK is also important for our sporty car lineup for Audi, for Porsche, for Volkswagen. So it's a big market. Uh, but I hope after a decision being made that it, some way or the other the market would recover and we would keep on selling cars there. Well, and Bentley can't move its production no, out of Woking. It has move. to be it built in uh, Britain, and I'm sure you have a lot more price elasticity there. What about the diesel situation here in Germany? Um, you need diesel engines uh, to, to meet your CO2 targets. Can you get Germans to accept that diesels are cleaner for the environment than, yes, than benzene cars? Yes, uh, I think, you know, at the end, the, the diesel offering is really for many of our customers, mostly for them who drive long distances, big cars, towing, uh, it's really still the right offer. The new diesel engines are really clean and uh, uh, for sure for the foreseeable future, for the big cars, long distances, uh, uh, long, let's say, uh, the, the, the high mileages through the year, they are still the right option. And uh, we see a recovery of the diesel market share in those segments. Now we will see a slump and, uh, and a reduction in the smaller cars because diesel technology is getting more and more expensive. Uh, but for the bigger cars, uh, you need a diesel still. Will you be able to get the CO2 targets in the EU changed? Yes, we will. No, no, we, we will meet the CO2 meet targets. Them. We will meet the CO2 targets mainly through electric cars.